Hey, good evening, folks. This is Barry's Best Honey. I'm Mike, and I do bees. Welcome back to another day in my 2020 beekeeping season. It's been a while since I made a video with bees. We're going all the way from winter through to the next fall here in my small operation in southeast Louisiana. And don't forget, this is a how I do video, not a how to video. Guys, I'm out here in my honey house this evening, and it has been a while since I've done a bee video. It's summer, assessments were done and vacation was had i'm doing some miscellaneous stuff this evening so just want to shoot a video not sure what all i'll put in but hey the plan is tonight i've got stuff to get ready for the market tomorrow i'm going to feed a couple hives tomorrow that were light um it's possibly going to be time to treat tomorrow if i have enough time after all my other chores because we had a storm come through and i got a lot of cleanup to do not a bad storm but enough where i need to clean up the yard and get some stuff tidy back up from before when I went on vacation so uh, but we're gonna try and maybe start treatments tomorrow and uh, shoot some video of that so still part of my season we have not ended the season yet we're not through to the fall yet and I might even be pulling honey I think I'm gonna wash my, my cap and tank out um, because there's a few supers out there I may try and get off I don't know just depends we'll see we'll see if they've eaten through some of it in this dirt so what am I doing? Like I said, getting ready for the market. I gotta do some bottling. Just about out of the last season's honey and get ready to pour in the new season's honey, but I think I can get enough for the market to finish up. Got a little sugar to mix up. Uh, only mix in one bag, a 10 pound bag. Um, and I'll show you that, but I do it like everybody else does it. Uh, but yeah, I got a 10 pound bag. I don't have a lot of hives to feed. And, uh, what else? Getting some uh, candles ready to be made for the market tomorrow. Looks like I got a little good old double boiler here. You know, the bottom water. I had an old bar that was messed up that I, of wax I put back in there. Um, I'm low on candles. That's a hot seller. That one sells first. That one and that one. Those two sell. Um, what else we doing? Oh, yeah. Got a bottle. Got to get the old bottle going. But, oh, it's almost empty. Matter of fact, I don't even know if I'll get enough out of there. I like to take my bottler every year and uh, empty it all the way out and then wash it real good and clean out the old water in the water jacket. Put some new distilled water in there and I like to um, take the, uh, the valve apart and clean out any crystallization that may have formed up in there. If you do enjoy the content of this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. I sure appreciate everybody that has been out there liking and subscribing. And, uh, Hey, we're back to a bee video. Let me get going on this stuff. Guys, nothing special about how I do my feed. I do it no different than everybody else. I got the old paint stirrer and a drill. Um, I do have hot water in there tonight. I did heat a little bit of water. I don't always heat the water, but since I only got a small batch to make, I just I heat it since it's going to be a little thicker. It's not necessarily two to one, but it's definitely way thicker than one to one. But I do the same thing your else does. It is easier with hot water. And if I have the opportunity, I can heat the water. But a lot of times, when you're mixing, you know, 10, 15 gallons, you don't have time for all that. And obviously then I don't. But I'm going to feed about a gallon to one hive and a quart to another nuke and same as everybody else I only got two hives I gotta feed right now so that's good news it's probably a one and three quarter to one but that's it just like everybody else does That's all I do, nothing fancy. Of course I got I don't have a 
I need to get me one of those candle pouring cups, you know, with a spout. But I hold a, I do a cheesecloth through this just to get any other impurities out. That's how I make my wax bars, everything. And my wax bar. We charge $12 a pound. 14 bucks for this Winnie the Pooh looking skep. It's got honey wrote across it. This is a nice candle. It really doesn't sell as much as I thought it would though. That one sells, and we sell that one for the same price. That's a beautiful candle. That little $4 one, we sell that. It'll be gone tomorrow after the market. It, it always sells. All right, I got a bottle of some honey. Got the feed made, cleaned out my own capping tank, made the candles, carved them in the morning. Got a bottle of some honey. top seller hey guys it's the next day from when I did all the intros and stuff and showed you what I was doing and bottling uh, this morning messed around with some candles got them going but uh, gonna go ahead we got thunderstorms supposed to move in today you know scattered normal stuff but I want to go ahead and uh, start treating my hives now I, I have some honey supers on some of them normally what I do is I wait till September 1st pull honey supers then treat everything um, make sure everything's in double deeps at that point but uh, not so this year um, I had left some mediums on thinking they could finish filling them with goldenrod later down the road but I want to say two or three of them at least two of them I'm pretty sure had a full super so I want to yank those off and, uh, and, and extract that um, and the parcels I'll probably leave them on depending how weak the hives are don't want any weak hives with extra space I know of one I probably need to pull a little note on treatments um, I'm not an anti-treat obviously I'm treating uh, you know there is no treatment and that means you're not even putting anything and doing nothing to the hive uh, except for maybe the what they call the IPM um, the, the pest management system uh, that's like screen boards and just leaving those alone I do run screen board for mites. I didn't do mite counts this year. Probably should have done that so I could see what the results are going to be. But I'm not an anti-treat guy at all. I just want to make sure everybody understands that. I don't even get into that debate. I don't want to get into that debate. No sense in bringing it up in the comments of which one's better and which one's worse and all that because I don't debate it. I don't get into it. It's your preference. your bees and you know what you're doing. Um, commercial guys, they have to treat and they're going to use chemical strips. Hobby guys that want to guarantee that their mites are killed are going to use chemical strips. I have no issues with that whatsoever. I don't care who you are and and I respect your opinion if you're a person that doesn't want any kind of strips in your hives or any kind of treatment whatsoever. It's all, you know, what, what, what are you doing for your operation? That's what it's all about. And, you know, I've always said that, I'm sorry about that, you know, I've always said that here is I'm not about telling you how to do stuff and what's right and wrong. Um, and there are several youtubers out there will tell you this is the best way to do it This is how you should do it. This is if you really want success do this, you know, I'm not that guy and I don't respect those guys That uh, they tell you that to be honest with you, you know, and, and in fact some of y'all I'm sorry, but You know beekeeping so varied and there's so many um, Variables in beekeeping and only a good handful of absolutes, you know uh, one absolute is mites will kill bees, so you got to figure out what you're going to do. Will the mite, uh, the bees adapt eventually? I'm sure they would. Uh, they've been around a lot longer than us, I'm, uh, you know, than I have. I'm sure they would adapt. But the question is, can a commercial guy with 4,000 hives afford to let him adapt? No, he'll starve his family. Um, will a sideliner, can he afford that, he or she? Uh, maybe not, you know. A hobby person, they can afford that. Um, 
I know a person doesn't treat with any chemicals whatsoever and uses brood breaks only and they have a 30% loss no different than a lot of commercial uh, beekeepers that use strips so it's it's back and forth both ways I just particularly don't use the strips one thing is expensive second it's a, it's a timing thing for sure uh, with the heat down here I use oxalic acid I vaporize it and I shoot it in there it's a naturally occurring compound so yes we shoot it in at major uh, doses compared to what it naturally occurs at but so far it's worked for me and I know oxalic acid is one of those deals where you should probably uh, do oxalic acid and then maybe strips it another time and all that but I don't I just do the oxalic acid and I really only do it once a year toward the fall that's when I use, usually lose my high uh, another thing is if the viruses have already come up uh, been transmitted and you can go and kill all the mites you want, they're still gonna die. So if I've already got hives that are beginning to get sick, it's too late anyway. But this is about the time you treat. Uh, one other thing I do, I thought about using uh, Max, uh, Mighty Way Quick Strips years ago. When I first started, I was like every other new beekeeper, you know, you don't wanna lose your bees and you hear all these horror stories and you start freaking out uh, and you start just buying everything and putting it in the hives. And uh, I'm gonna smile when I mention this, Chris, but I'm gonna mention, East Coast Prospecting, okay, ECP, on YouTube, y'all go see him, he's been doing bee videos, he's, he's his first year, and he and I have gotten to where we talk, I don't, I don't answer him as much as I should, because I don't ever keep a phone on half the time, but uh, uh, we talk, and he uses uh, a mentor up north, and then we bounce ideas off each other from down here. And uh, he's a hard charger, man. He's going 100 miles an hour, and it reminds me of me. He just, he's going a little further than I went because I just didn't uh, treat it the first year. But I was like, I was like that, man. I was, oh my gosh, my bees are going to die. You know, you hear all these horror stories, and you're like, mites. That's all you hear about is mites. And, uh, and uh, yeah, but he, he's just like I am. He's rolling 100 miles an hour, and he's, he's making, wanting to do everything he can to keep his bees alive, and he's doing well doing really good his bees are doing really really well he's got a good local mentor up there and um and it's just an idea of you know he's a hobbyist he he chooses to treat i began to do that as well and when i did it um i bought mighty way quick strips because i i did want to keep the chemicals out of the hives um you know and like him i was just really concerned every time something happens like oh my gosh the bees are gonna die oh my gosh this is gonna happen we most a lot of us did that when we were beginners as hobbyists if we didn't grow up in the industry and so I I, uh, I said well I did want to try and stay chemical free so I bought the mighty way quick strips because those kill under the brood cap they say and they also um, they're also can be, you can use them uh, with supers on and I bought them and I still have them to this day and haven't opened them because and that was <laughs> eight years ago because I started also reading that if the temperature wasn't just right with those they were losing queens and like that freaked me out you know so i thought about using those i thought about hop guard that was another big one that came out about four years ago or five years ago then they redid the formula and it's supposed to be natural and now they got the other one um i don't forget the name of it but all the old harsh ones have went away there's still some other harsh ones now it's apple bar i guess it's the big deal I just don't want to sink the expense in it. Those Max, man, those things were expensive. I still got it if anybody wants them. But oxalic acid seems to be cheap and pretty much effective. Along with my screen boards and treatment when I do, I sustain about the same losses as everybody else does. So hopefully not any massive losses and haven't seen any massive losses outside of the major poisoning that we had. So there's my explanation. There's what I'm telling you uh, about my way of doing it and that I'm not against anybody that is doing it and you know, everybody has to do what they need to do and, uh, and, and, and want to keep their bees alive. Everybody finds their way, okay? And that's how I am. I found my way and this is what I do. So I gotta get to doing that. I need to um, pull those honey supers if I'm gonna pull them if they're full. And that's what we're doing. All right guys, let me get busy uh, doing this instead of rambling on because you can't get work done when you're rambling on. You see I'm already dripping sweat. I think it's in the 80s, just hit the 80s, maybe in the upper 70s. Very humid out, and uh, it's morning. I'm going to catch all this before it gets too hot and too stormy. Let's get busy. All right, guys, so the generator's running. Uh, 
I'm gonna load up the cups and all that. I'm gonna show you what I do. I don't have holes in the back of my hives, but I basically, oh, that's a rotten bottom board. Yeah, that's gotta be changed out. I don't, uh, I don't do the holes in the back of hives. I just use entry reducers on the front, and I use the, uh, I slide the uh, chloroplast back in on the screen bottom boards to hold some of the vapor in. That's all I do. I do one treatment every seven days for three weeks. I'll show you what I do. Another thing I'll be doing is the hives that have a super on them. I can't treat with the super on, so what I'll do is as soon as I come to a stand, I'll put a fume board on and fume the bees down out of it so I get the majority of the bees out. By the time I get to that hive, I'll pull the super off and put a board in between and put it back on. That way it stays sealed with no robbing happening with it laying out. Um, if it's cool, I'll take it. If it's partial and the hive looks a little weak, I'll take it. If it looks like it can stand to keep it, I'll leave it and maybe we'll get some golden rod in it at the end of fall. Alright guys, that's it. Hope you can hear me with this mask. So I just used entrance reducers. It looks like I lose a little bit, but I mean, there's a lot more going in than you think. So I did pull that super. That super has got eight or seven of nine frames full. And I think they're heavy enough. I'm going to leave them alone. They don't need that extra space to guard.
Hey guys, that's it. I've gotten all the colonies here done. Um, it was a little slow going. Uh, just hadn't done it since last year. And I was trying to pull honey and install a few beetle blasters and you know, didn't have enough of this or enough of that. So I think I got everything in. Most of those I'll leave entrance reducers in except for the very large hives, just so they can, I don't want the large hives cooped up too much in the heat. Everything went well. Um, did have one mean hive and then I, I did get stung on the backside. <laughs> but uh, one mean hive, man, they got after me. So I'm gonna have to watch them next time I do them and do a little stuff every entrance. But you see, it, it would be faster if I did it from behind with the holes. But that's just another hole to plug. It's just another hole. I mean, it's just easy. I, I have time. I'm not doing 50 or 60 hives. Uh, if I have 50 or 60, I probably put holes in the back and run through them, stuff the fronts and fill the back. But uh, I didn't do that, so I'll do this every seven days i'll do it three times that'll cover a brood cycle and uh we'll be good to go i think one of them i didn't leave it closed long enough but uh yeah, we'll see but uh, yeah i was stumbling and bumbling a little bit uh, but we got it done that's all that matters couldn't really go over to the pond and do those three got all my stuff loaded up uh, i pulled four supers of honey and two of those were half uh i think the one at the pond it was full if they haven't eaten it all but i got in there and there were some beetles so what, I, what my goal is, is to run the bees down with a fume board, put a separator in, vaporize the bottom, and then put them back together. Well, when I got in, uh, I figured I'd pull the full ones and replace them. When I got in there, some of those had a lot of beetles, so we're not going to wait for fall honey. We're just going to pull them. I did leave one on. It was a very strong hive, um, and it had some food in it for them, so I left that one. But, uh, yeah, I don't want to don't take no chances with that. So... I did the ones next door all as well so next week I probably won't you know I probably won't uh, video it I might video it in a time lapse or something show you what I'm doing but uh, it'll be the same but hopefully it'll be a little faster because again I left some entrance reducers in I left the chloroplast in the screen bottoms for now um, you know kind of left them configured a little bit easier so then it'll be just jumping from hive to hive I won't have to worry about fume boards and pulling supers and all that so hopefully it'll go a little bit faster and it's pretty quick with my little generator extension cord and my, my tractor out there so what I need to do after the three weeks of doing this, I do need to go back and do some mite counts. I didn't do any prior to see how effective I'm going to be, and I'm just going to do random ones because I got, the, the hives were looking uh, really weak this year, just I think due to a lot of swarming. So they're, they're trying to get that traction and build up. So I don't want to do uh, mite counts on everything. I may just randomly mite count and see how effective we were um, on some of the larger hives because those are your mite bombs anyway. Anyway, so that's what I do for my treatments. Uh, I'm actually starting them a little bit early this year. Got, uh, got them off middle of August instead of 1st of September as far as the supers and started treating. I just wanted to treat a little earlier. Uh, beetles are bad this year. Beetles are really bad. So some of those highs that we pulled the supers off of, that was a good thing because now we can condense them down. I put in extra beetle blasters. The diametaceous earth is working. And I did have one Swiffer that I had left in one that had about 20 beetles on it. So that was good. Um, I do want to try the, uh, the uh, uh, I forget the name, the Dixie sheets that Bruce's Bees did. I had heard about those a few years ago. Somebody had mentioned those or I seen them somewhere, but he did a video and uh, outside of the ones drag, drug out, they did good. Uh, but if they're dragging them out, hygienic bees, hey, that's good against mites anyway.
but uh, but there's a lot of beetles this year. There are a lot of beetles. I saw one of them. I saw a ton come out of a super, and I'm glad I got it off. So uh, really got to keep an eye on that. Um, strong hives, man. That's it. That's the bottom line. Strong hives. Got to have strong hives for beetles. So that's the hope we keep them strong by reducing them down and uh, we get these treatments done. Hopefully we don't have any sick bees and we get these treatments done and knock these mites back and uh, that'll help to, the, for the hive to build. And then I got one nuke I got to put a jar of uh, feed on. Uh, but that's it. We're good to go. So I appreciate you guys joining me. And I know it's been a while since I had a video on bees, but it's been a while since I messed with the bees. It's time to get back after these treatments and then we'll be on another lull. So again, thanks for watching. If you like the video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. That really does help the video get out there to those folks looking for bee videos. And if you haven't subscribed already, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. That's the good old saying everybody tells you because, hey, every time we upload any material, you'll get a notification. And don't forget to share this video with your friends, family, anybody that just enjoys watching bees. Hey, it's been a pleasure doing this video. It's good to get back to working out here a little bit. You guys have a wonderful afternoon, and God bless y'all.